Welcome to Superhero Pow. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frumgen. Finally getting to something I've wanted to do for a long while, digging through my comic book collection and spotlighting defunct, fun, and or odd series. Something my old editor, Mark L. Miller, would call Raiders of the Long Box. This one goes way back in time for me. My first real indie comic book, Shuriken. As you may know about me, I used to be a big anime fan. Now I'm just a passing one. But back when anything anime related was very scarce, I bought up nearly anything I could find. The biggest thing in anime, stateside, at the time was Robotech. When comic book publisher Kamiko got the rights to Robotech and put out comic book adaptions of shows I already recorded on VHS, I bought them anyway. Sadly, I have sold them now and... I actually regret selling every comic book I ever sold. But getting back to the Robotech comic book, it featured art by Neil Vokes, Mike Leakey, and Reggie Byers. Reggie quickly became a fave of mine and my friends. Then in 1985, he launched his own anime-inspired comic book, Shuriken, with a little help from Neil Vokes. While a few years behind Katana from Batman and the Outsiders, Shuriken was one of the first female Asian martial artists in comics, although Lady Shiva from 1975 was probably the first. The industry is now loaded with them. Either way, Kyoko Shidara, a.k.a. Shuriken, was an elite bodyguard for Morgan Enterprises, your typical 80s corrupt corporation. With plenty of criminal activity to oversee, Morgan's elite guards were also assassins, though their top man, Lynx, was always annoyed that Shuriken never got an assassination assignment. This was because she morally wasn't quite ready for it, and the boss and CEO, Morgan, was interested in her. So by keeping her on the payroll, he hoped she would warm up to him and the job of assassin. Kyoko herself is a bit of a lost girl. Her mother died when she was young, and then the Yakuza killed her father. She and her brother Koji were then raised by her aunt. Though before he died, their father taught both Kyoko and Koji Kung Fu. Probably should have been karate, but I digress. They both continued to master the art after their father died. Kyoko moved to America to go to college, while Koji stayed in Japan. Though despite a college education, Kyoko never really applied herself to anything and ended up working for Morgan. Wasting her money, she lives paycheck to paycheck, spending most of her time with her wannabe pop star friend, Joan. The first issue came out in late 1985, when DC's first crisis and Marvel's second secret war were coming to an end. Shuriken's first story arc dealt with an assassin named Eagle Claw, who killed Joan's boyfriend and then turned his attention to Joan herself. Kyoko fights and chases the villain back to Japan. And just like any good martial arts movie, she deals with family issues while she is there. I don't want to give too much away, but if you're familiar with martial arts movies, you can pretty much figure out what happens at the end of this four-issue arc, involving her aunt, her brother, and a showdown with the Yakuza. I should also point out, those first four issues were reprinted in one of the industry's first tradebacks in 1987. After a few single-issue stories, Morgan Enterprises comes calling on Kyoko again, and they, or rather he, wants her back. But Morgan's current personal bodyguard and girlfriend, Megumo, the spider, is not happy with the prospects of being replaced by the younger, less battle-scarred, and still innocent Kyoko. So she takes her frustration out on Kyoko, framing her for murder and beating the crap out of her. Kyoko eventually needs help in dealing with Megumo, and when it's all over, she quits working for Morgan, fearful that Megumo's fate could happen to her. These two issues were done by fill-in writer-artist Michio Okamura, who actually manages to outdo Reggie. Seriously, these issues were great. The final issue of Shuriken, number 9, again featured several fill-in artists to help Reggie out, and none of them are as strong as Reggie or Michio. The story underwhelmed as well as a flashback story of when Shuriken started working for Morgan Enterprises. Basically, at this point, Reggie was doing double duty, and he was forced to let Shuriken and his own company, Victory Comics, shut down. 
This is because he was neck deep in Shuriken's sister, now replacement series, The Blade of Shuriken, for Eternity Comics in 1987. Picking up Kyoko's life after leaving Morgan Enterprises, she becomes a freelance bodyguard. Being hired by a mayor who's marked for death by the mob, and still dealing with colorful Yakuza assassins from the family drama of the first story arc. Unfortunately, The Blade of Shuriken only lasted five issues. Reggie would then help put together Shuriken Team Up, which was a crossover with other Eternity Comics characters, but it never made it past the first issue. At this point, Eternity Comics was bought by Malibu Graphics, and apparently in the deal, they bought the rights to Shuriken from Reggie Byers as well. So after those final issues, Reggie was never able to work on Shuriken again. Meanwhile, the Eternity imprint would attempt three more times to publish Shuriken, now written by S.A. Bennett, who would make her world less martial arts and more anime, adding mechs and whatnot. First was Shuriken Cold Steel, with artist Christopher Taylor in 1998, and then a one-shot called Shuriken Hellbender, and a follow-up series just called Shuriken Again which ran six issues, both with art by Wes Abbott. Bennett would also retool Shuriken's backstory and her look, and they're all terrible. Seriously, just up and down awful. I mean, look at this. Even by indie comic standards, this is terrible. Eventually, Malibu Comics would shut down Eternity Comics and then get bought by Marvel in their Ultraverse days. At this point, Shuriken would return to comics in the team book Ultra Force. And they had legendary comic book artist George Perez do a redesign of Shuriken. Pretty neat, but I still prefer the anime look. This Shuriken was basically a new character named Brittany Chin, who was loaded with superpowers, like typical physical enhancements and omni-powered energy throwing stars. Then when Marvel finally shelved everything Ultraverse, Shuriken was never seen again. I actually bumped into Reggie Byers years ago at a comic book convention, and he confirmed what you can probably guess. The Malibu characters, Shuriken included, are in legal limbo. As the story goes, everybody involved owns a piece of the characters, making it a logistical nightmare to figure out how to pay anyone and everyone if the characters are ever used again, which is a damn shame all around. As any good creator does, Reggie moved on to have some success with a Christian kids concept, Kids of the King. Then he tried a Shuriken clone with Crescent, who unfortunately never made it to a second issue. Currently, he's working on more Kids Fair with Afro Boy and Puff Girl. But my heart will be forever linked to those first nine issues of Kyoko Shidara, a.k.a. Shuriken. The stories were based, to be sure, and Reggie's art isn't as slick as American anime artists today, but it was exciting and slick enough, if you ask me. In a perfect world, the rights to Shuriken would return to Reggie, and he'd be able to do something cool with her, as surely Disney doesn't give a damn about her. Well, there you go. Were you hip to Shuriken or Reggie Byers before all this, or is this your first time hearing about them? Either way, tell me what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you could be so kind to like and subscribe, I won't have to send the Yakuza over to your place and chop you up into little tiny pieces and bury you alive! Wow, that got dark. <laughs> <laughs>